Hi everybody, welcome to Fire It Up with CJ. Today we have Michael Faith who is going to be talking about his book and uh, Heartfire and we are going to be talking about um, aligning our hearts to the cycle of life. And Michael's going to be talking about his book um, that covers aligning our hearts to the cycle of life. So welcome Michael. Thank you CJ, nice to be here with you. So tell us about your book and how, you know, it's the new year. How could we align our hearts to the new year? And what, is, what does it mean to align our hearts to the cycle of life? Yeah, thank you. Well, um, the book is called Heart Fire, Practices to Awaken, Expand, and Engage Your Heart. And it's uh, specifically written for people who want to find really practical and achievable ways of uh, bringing them into their heart center mm -hmm. and to live consciously and uh, powerfully from their heart. Um, oftentimes I, I have felt uh, as a spiritual seeker and as a yoga practitioner that there's a lot of spiritual information out there. And so I wanted to try to synthesize and distill some information to, to say, okay, how do we do this? <laughs> how, do, how do we actually do it? Like when, when we're meeting with our parents or when yes. we're in an argument with a, with a friend or lover or mm -hmm. when things aren't going well in our lives. And so it's really um, practical, uh, powerful and achievable ways to, to live from your heart. And mm -hmm. so um, one of the things that is a topic in the book uh, is about aligning with the cycles of life. Mm -hmm. And I think first and foremost, the, the most important thing for me to convey about that is um, how do we bring presence to life? Mm -hmm. Like how do we bring the gift of our presence to life? And I think that that's probably one of the most powerful things that we can do for ourselves and for for others. Um, mm -hmm. One of the deepest gifts that we can give to others is our presence. Mm -hmm. And um, I always like to share this story because <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a humorous example of what happens when we don't bring our presence. And um, was, our lives, our normal lives. <laughs> yeah, right, 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 right. <laughs> but I was, I, was, I was driving on my way to work and I, um, I saw this, this young guy riding his bike down this very, very busy and dangerous street. Mm -hmm. And he was riding his bike without holding on to um, the handlebars, which is no big deal in and of itself. But what he was doing is he was looking down and texting. And, oh, and gosh. Just like, <laughs> That's awful. And it's like the world is like built around this like sacred bond of trust, right? Mm -hmm. Like we trust each other to do certain things in certain ways that kind of keeps the world working in a certain way, right? right. And it's like the, it's built on relationship. And, and part of those relationships are our presence, like how much are we willing to put forth into the things that we take action in mm -hmm. in the world, right? And so that person in that moment was, was choosing to, to relinquish their presence from the world. And yeah. who knows what the consequences of that are. But we all make those choices. Yeah, they're and, relating and, to someone in cyber world. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they were relating, but not to that world yeah. on the streets. And so, so the first step in aligning with the cycles of life is making the commitment to show up in our lives mm -hmm. like fully and powerfully. And, and, and that, that begins with presence. And so, um, you know, that, that the only way that I have ever learned to bring presence into my own life is by slowing things down and choosing to go deep. And, and where I go deep and where I slow down is by just bringing awareness to my breath. Mm -hmm. And then from there, bringing awareness to my heart and from there, just kind of sinking in to the moment. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's, that's the first step for me is, is bringing presence to, to what I do. And then with, with that, aligning with the cycles, um, this idea is, is borrowed from uh, Kashmir Shaivism, uh, which is kind of like a philosophical system from uh, you know, Hinduism. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and... Um, with it, there's, there's kind of five cycles, right? It's kind of known as the five acts of Shiva. Mm -hmm. And so the first is, is creation. Like, what are we putting forth into the world? Mm -hmm. um, the second is sustaining. So after we create, like, what is the energy required to sustain what we, what we just gave birth to? Mm -hmm. And then dissolution, the ending of things. Uh, how do we release? How do we let go? And then the next two are a little bit tricky to explain, but I'll, but I'll try my best. Okay. It's uh, concealment and revelation, and, they, and they're, they're closely connected together. So the, the best way to talk about concealment is um, that period where 
it feels as if nothing is going on, uh-huh. right? Or it feels as if I don't understand what's happening in my life right now. Um, and then revealment is kind of like, aha, I totally understand what, what that moment in time was for. Uh, my favorite quote about these two cycles is, life can only be lived forward and understood backwards. Mm-hmm. Right? And so it's kind of like that moment where you're being prepared for something, but you're not quite sure what it is. Yes. And then all of a sudden it makes perfect sense. You, you totally understand that the curriculum that was out before you was designed to take you to this next moment. Yes. Right? Yep. And so with that aligning with the cycles, it's that every stage of our life is within one of these cycles. Right? One of these stages of the cycle. So a relationship that you're currently in is within... Uh, you know, one of these five stages. And and just because a relationship is in a dissolution phase doesn't mean that the relationship itself is ending. It just means that a current part of the relationship may be ending. So sometimes people might be like, oh, it feels like the relationship itself is ending. And um, one of the things that we'll probably get to at some point is that when we tune into our heart, we can really listen to figure out what is actually calling for dissolution right now? Mm-hmm. Is it for me to relinquish control of some, some part of the relationship? Is mm-hmm. it for me to relinquish a story uh, that I have with my partner? So dissolution doesn't necessarily mean an actual ending. Mm-hmm. Um, but no matter, no matter what phase of life, work, relationship, um, body, right? right. It's, it's in with, within one of those cycles. And so, right, so it's about tuning into your heart, your breath, to be clear with what cycle that aspect of your life is in and what is calling for to be either dissolved, created, or be in the unknown. Is that what you Yeah, uh, and, it, and it's, it's through this deeper attunement to, to the wisdom of our heart and to the intelligence of the heart that we can really learn what, what does this moment require of me. Mm-hmm. Right, because sometimes we could be in a situation, and and it really is it is time to dissolve something, mm-hmm. but we're but we're holding on so tightly to to what we we want, right? And so listening to our heart really gives us a sense of what is needed, right, as compared to what what do we want? Right. I think it's the difference between kind of universal understanding and what our ego wants. That's what or, I would think of it. Yeah. Al- you could also think of it as aligning with divine will. Yes. A- so yeah. hard to do. Easy to say, hard to do. <laughs> totally. totally. <laughs> so the first step, so, and we have a couple more minutes. So the first step is to um, get it present. And then you said there were four other steps? Yeah, so, so the first step is to, to get present, right? And, and I think that all of us have different ways of doing that. If you mm-hmm. don't, one simple way to, to be present is to simply notice your breath. Um, another thing is to tune into your heart energy. And so a real simple way is to take one hand on top of the other, right on top of your heart space, right. right? And you can close your eyes and just start to direct the energy of your breath to and from your heart so mm-hmm. you can visualize the breath kind of ventilating and circulating inside mm-hmm. your heart center in your life. Like say you're applying for jobs, you're currently unemployed, um, and, you're, and you're at your wit's end because you, you're just like, ah, oh, frustration, right? And you just abide in that sacred fluidity of life flowing in and out of you. And that's when you start to, you know, one of the simplest, most powerful definitions of meditation that I know of is abiding with the fluid energy of life, mm. right? And so that's, that's the connection to, to heart wisdom, to heart intelligence, is mm. riding that fluid wave of life through mm. the breath, you know? Mm. And... Um, and then you can bring to mind that, that challenge, right? Mm-hmm. So like you're, you're just in that heart space, that heart field. You bring to mind that challenge and you say, I'm willing to surrender this issue to the wisdom of my heart. Yeah. Right? And so... And is that, and that step three or is that another step? Or I, I don't know. Yeah, so the first step is just kind of bringing awareness to the breath, mm-hmm. awareness to the heart, mm-hmm. and, you know, just really paying attention to the heart. And then the third would be to bring awareness to what the issue is. Mm-hmm. It's to render it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> On January 4th, you'll be at East West Bookstore where you'll be t- showcasing your book and um, offering some other practices. Is that right? Yes. Okay, yeah. great. Thank you so much and Happy New Year's.